Are you bored of watching a lot of videos on how to prepare for DSA? By the way, have any of these plans helped you overcome your fear of DSA interviews? What if I told you that there is a time-tested approach to learning DSA that has helped over a thousand learners crack their job interviews? And more importantly, it's a super easy plan to follow and practice for yourself. Are you ready to go through the plan and start working today? Hi, I'm Ritwik and today I'm going to walk you through the three stages of learning data structures and algorithms what areas to focus on each stage and share the important topics to cover as you go from stage one to stage three. Now, DSA is a hot topic when it comes to interviews. It is asked during in-person interviews and online assessments as well. So how many problems do you need to solve to get ready for your interviews? A hundred, a thousand, as many problems as you can cover till the day of your interview. Well, here's how you can decide on the number of problems you need to solve. If you're a fresher or you're relatively new to the industry, hundred problems is all it takes to crack a job under eight lakhs per annum. If you're aiming for eight to 15 lakhs per annum, you'll need to solve about 250 problems. And if you're looking to land your dream job, which pays above 15 lakhs per annum, you need to focus on more than 250 problems to make it through every round. Remember I told you about three stages? Each stage in this video is designed to incrementally take you towards your dream job. However, randomly solving the said number of problems is not going to help. Let's look at what you need to cover in each stage. And before we dive into the three stages, drop a comment and tell us which language you're going to use to practice the DSA problem. Stage one. For this stage, you need to set aside around 150 hours for preparation. And the end goal of this stage is to write 20 to 30 lines of code without making too many mistakes. In this stage, you'll be doing a lot of syntax lookups on Google, which is absolutely fine. Don't get discouraged by the idea of Googling things. In the end, isn't that how we learn? With time, the familiarity with the language will increase. Another thing is you're going to run into common errors and exceptions. For every piece of code you write, you're likely to run into some errors like array index out of bound exception, missing return statement, name of some variable is not defined. So what's the best way to cross this stage? Spend time on Google to try and understand what the error exactly means and then make changes to the code. The biggest mistake that you can do here is making random changes to the code just for the sake of getting rid of the errors. Don't do that. Any language has a finite number of errors. Once you're familiar with the top 25 errors, you'll be quite comfortable with the language and your coding speed will increase as well. The most important topic to practice in this stage are logic building, collections 101, space and time complexity, arrays, which would include techniques like two pointers, sliding window, matrix, prefix sum, and binary search. You will have to practice sorting, linked list implementations and its operations, application of hash, tags, and queues, and basic recursion. An excellent resource for this stage is cracking the coding interview book. Before we get to stage two, let's look at the essentials you need to complete for stage one. Do make sure to take a screenshot so that you can have all the topics in one place. Stage two. Once you pass stage one, you have won half the battle. Now you'll have enough confidence in yourself as a coder. Unlike the earlier stage, to get good at these problems, you'll have to go through multiple resources. A good start would be to solve top 100 to 150 commonly asked medium difficulty problems in lead code. Stage two is more about becoming good at cracking interviews rather than just being a good coder. You might ask, are they different? And the answer is a resounding yes. For you to be a good developer in a company, all you need are the development skills and the level of practice in stage one. But to crack personal interviews where your expected CTC is above 8 lakhs, you need stage 2 and 3. Here you can approach stage 2 of your preparation. In this stage, improve your ability to think about multiple solutions for a given problem. Analyze the time and space complexity for the said solution and pick one which suits you the best. Focus on writing graph traversals for BFS and DFS in less than 10 minutes. Since you're familiar with the syntax and the common errors, you'll be able to resolve them quite quickly. Your coding and debugging skills would have improved considerably by the end of this stage. Overall, you should be able to reduce any problem to the functions you have already written in the past and solve them. Before you start solving your next 100 to 150 problems, it's important to set goals on the kind of problems you want to solve in this stage. Focus on these topics. Implementation of stack, queue, hash, BST and tree. Application of BST, tree, heap and graph, breadth first search, and depth first searched. If you have made it till here, comment and let us know what you have been struggling with the most when it comes to learning DSA. 
If it's something we haven't covered yet, we could help you in the comment section. And if it's already covered in this video, it will make our day to know that this video helped you find your direction. Before moving on to the last and final stage, let's look at what you need to get past stage two. Again, if you need to take a screenshot, please do that. Stage three, now comes the final stage. Until now, you have solved about 250 problems. You're familiar with the common errors you might encounter and are capable of picking up the right solution to a problem. You're pretty much comfortable with data structures and algorithms at this stage. Now, all you have to do is practice. Increase your speed of coding and cracking interviews. For example, in stage two, you solved a graph problem in 45 minutes. Would you believe me if I say that you'll be able to solve it in 20 minutes? You absolutely can, but there's a catch. Constant practice. Dedicate some time and focus on solving a wide variety of problems. This reduces the chance of you getting into an unfamiliar situation or question during the interview. One tip here is look at the problem like a game, not like a chore. If you do this, you will start enjoying being challenged with new problems. With this mindset, you'll be motivated to solve newer problems. The topics you need to cover in this stage are DP memoization, DP tabulation, knapsack, advanced recursion and backtracking, greedy method, topological sort, graph partitioning, fanning tree, shortest path algorithm, try and segment tree. Now that you have understood how to go about the various stages, let's try to understand how to do deliberate practice to get the best out of your time. A simple yet effective way is to learn by reading good code before solving the problems yourself. You'll pick up on efficient tips and tricks that will help you further down the line. Here is a simple and effective approach to solving any problem, especially in stage one, day one. Take a problem and spend about 10 to 15 minutes to come up with a reasonable approach to solve the problem. Read through various ways of how others have solved this problem. Day two or later, try implementing the solution by yourself. An interesting thing to note here is that we are asking you to look at various solutions on day one and solve the problem independently on another day. Any guesses why? The reason behind this is that if you try to solve the problem on the same day as you go through the solution, you are more likely to reproduce the same answers which you have read already. Try this out and you'll be able to see the difference for yourself. Come back to the comment section and let us know the difference you saw in your solutions. Yes, the aim is to practice and practice a lot, but don't practice aimlessly. Set specific goals you want to achieve by the end of your practice. Let me walk you through three must achieve goals you need to set for yourself before you begin your practicing journey. Be familiar with a lot of patterns of problem solving. Familiarity with the problems themselves. Example, linked list reversal, mirroring a BST, or count island have been asked for time forever. No harm in having the ability to write the code quickly for these problems. Most importantly, repeatability. When you practice, ask yourself this question. If the same problem were asked next time in an interview setting, can you solve it in 30 to 40 minutes? This should give you an idea. If you endlessly debug to make the program work, then you will not be able to write it again with the similar pain. This is where Cryo's methodology helps you leaps and bounds. Break down a problem of any size into small pieces and focus on writing very small functions. When you approach this way, repeatability becomes very easy. So how should you practice to achieve these goals? Be consistent. Two problems per day is ideal. Syntaxes come naturally with practice. Don't rack your brain if you can't remember a syntax. Look online immediately. Spend no more than 90 minutes on a problem. If you're stuck, come back to it after a day. Improve your debugging skills. Find a partner you can buddy up with and practice every day. This helps sustain motivation and will keep you more consistent over a period of time. You can start by sharing this video with your buddy and ask them to join you on this journey. That brings us to the end of this video. If you have been struggling with DSA to crack interviews, comment and tell us the first thing that you are going to do differently after watching this video. If you found this three-stage approach useful, hit the like button and stay tuned for more career help and advice and take your career to new heights.